Hello, I am going to be talking about some of the performance numbers from a 2.1 kilowatt Legion solar do-it-yourself type of solar system. Um, I didn't get here immediately though. It's actually been quite a process to get to this point. And I actually have a whole bunch of videos. If you go to the YouTube page, um, you can see that I start out by talking about how I was going to size the system. And we have unboxing videos, the split core installations. Um, then uh, we just have pictures of uh, solar on the roof and how it looks from all the different angles. Um, I have some original data from when I only had two sets of solar panels or uh, 0.6 kilowatts. Then I talk about adding more and more panels, um, having a whole bunch of batteries that got put into the system, more unboxing. Um, just uh, take a look at these videos if you haven't. And just so that you can see where things are at right now, I am going to include a video that actually shows uh, the system on the roof. And I took this video just uh, maybe half an hour ago. So this is where things are at right this very instant. Hello on a very windy day in mid, well, late November actually. Um, so this is the full seven sets of panels. You can see that that is what they currently look like. And this roof is facing south. Uh, if we face south, you can see that this is what we're up against. Now we're looking west. Now I want to, to talk about um, just where my system is at, where my house is at with respect to how much electricity we use. And this data is actually the electric usage that we get with our electric bill each month. And uh, basically the months here, we get the, the bill somewhere mid-month. And the, the November bill, for instance, is probably covering... Um, from about the first week of October to the first week of November. And you can see, uh, so we got the, the, original, the original two sets of the solar panels were installed on October 3rd. So this November bill is kind of the first bill that we've got that, that talks or that uh, takes into account any of the solar usage at all. And interestingly, you can see that uh, the 12.34 average uh, kilowatt hours per day. Um, if you look through all of the old data, there's actually only been uh, one month in the last couple of years where we've used less uh, kilowatts. But um, you know, it's hard to hard to say exactly what that means. Um, a couple of other interesting things from this data: you can see that uh, the average cost that that I pay for kilowatt hour is about 12.43 cents. And that's including taxes. That's, that's really including everything. So keep that in mind. And now let's, uh, let's go ahead and look at uh, some more useful information about what we can expect out of the, uh, the solar. And there's a really neat website and this is at the, NREL um, site, the National Renewable Energy Lab. And this is actually uh, pvwatts.nrl.gov slash pvwatts.php. And at this website, you can actually go and put in any address that you want to. And I'm going to put in an address pretty close to where I'm at. And uh, you can see that it, it found the address properly. And then if we go to system information, 
I'm going to put in some information uh, for the area around here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually say that my system is 0.3 kilowatts, and basically that is one set of panels from Legion Solar. Um, we've been told that we've got premium stuff here, so I'm going to say that the module type is premium. Um, I have it on the roof, and it is a fixed mount. Um, I have the panels tilted at 33.5 degrees, which is the optimum tilt for my latitude. And we know that the inverters that we have are 94% efficient. And then if I put in, we have 12.43 cents. So we have that as the rate. Then if we go to the results, this is actually really cool. Um, you can see here the exact uh, kilowatt hours per year that you can expect out of a system like this. And you can see that uh, in, in uh, December, we're down at 21 kilowatt hours, where in July and August, uh, we're all the way up at 42. So basically in the winter, you can expect half of the solar production <clears throat> that you're going to get in the summer. Um, and a couple of uh, things that you can do here, you can actually download the data, the monthly and hourly data. And now let's uh, go ahead and take a look at that because that's kind of neat too. So if we look at the monthly data per panel, um, you can see that you're basically given the kilowatt hours of AC output. Um, you can see that the DC output is 28, the AC is 26, that's whenever you take that 94% efficiency for the inverter in. Um, and so really these numbers here are the useful numbers and they are broken down by month. And you can see that this is the, four, the 21 kilowatt hours that I was talking about for December. And then uh, this uh, area in here is the, the 42 kilowatt hours that we're going to get in the middle of summer. Uh, that's broken down by month but we can actually break it all the way down by hour. And whenever we look at the hourly data, um, this is just a crazy amount of data. You can see that, that for uh, this is for February 7th, and then for each hour of the day, we actually have information on exactly how many watts of power that we should be producing. There are a couple things, though, that I want to point out. And these are valuable enough that, that we need to read them and actually understand them. Uh, you might wonder where this data is coming from. And this data is actually based on a 30-year history of historic uh, weather data for uh, a place that's 77 miles from here, which is pretty close. Um, this is data from a roof mount fixed system. And you can see that it has a 90% chance of gen that in any given year, we have a 90% chance of generating at least 0.94 uh, kilowatts that, that is described in this estimated data. And that uh, in any given year, we have a 10% chance of generating more than 103.7%. But what that means is that most of the time, we should expect to see something between 90 and 110 percent of the numbers that we have in here. And um, you can see that the numbers that we have in here, this is saying that over the last 30 years, on average, that, uh, that in hour 7 of January 1, we generally are able to get 26 watts. And again, remember, this is for a 300 watt system. And so um, my current system is 2.1 kilowatts, so we would need to take this and multiply it by 7. Um, and so uh, then for, for each one of the subsequent hours down through uh, 3 p.m., 3 p.m., we're back down to, to 26, and then it drops off until the next day uh, whenever it takes off again. And so this is extremely detailed data. And what I have done is I have actually calculated that for January 1st, if you sum up all of these numbers, you can see that we have the, the sum of 936. I've actually summed up all the numbers here, 
and this is uh, the data on January 1st. Based on the last 30 years of data, we would expect 936 watts of production, basically watt hours. Um, and on uh, January 2nd, you can see that these numbers jump around a whole lot. And this is, uh, this is just based on statistical data. What it means, though, is that the data for any one day by itself is not terribly valuable. Uh, you really need to, to sum up the data over a period of time uh, to get something that's actually more reasonable. So with that in mind, let's look at the performance that I am actually seeing. Uh, this is a spreadsheet that I've made up. Um, the solar system that I have, we originally brought it online on October 3rd. And at that time, I had uh, two inverter-only panels, and I had no panel sets that use a battery commander. So uh, the, the theoretical total watts that we could produce at that time was 600 watts. Um, on October 17th, uh, I actually brought five battery commanders online and one inverter only. And so that put me at 800 watts of production. And then on November 9th, we actually added another set that was inverter only. And that put us at the current 2.1 kilowatts of production. So uh, that is uh, where we're at with that. Now the uh, weather data that we have, I have actually uh, brought in all the weather data for each one of these days. And if I were to summarize what the weather has been like for the last um, seven weeks or so since we got the, the solar panels, I would say that in general it has not been very sunny. And so my expectation is that uh, production would be lower, but at the same time you have to think that those estimates over the last 30 years, uh, you'd have to think that October and November have been like this before. So in theory the estimates should be pretty accurate. Uh, but you can see that uh, the, this is the data. We've had a, a couple of snow events um, around uh, Halloween on October 31st. We had uh, quite a bit of snow um, and then uh, we had another time here around Veterans Day on 11-11 um, where we also had a fair amount of snow. You can see that we had some really cold temperatures on the 12th. It got down to, to five degrees. Um, <clears throat> that evening and it was about seven degrees that morning. So uh, we have this weather data also and I'm going to scroll through it so that you can see it, uh, but I'm not going to go into a, a ton of additional details. I'm then just, I'm going to make those columns go away just so that we don't have to look at them. <clears throat> now we have the estimated uh, per panel production. And so on October 3rd, uh, this estimated per panel production is from the PV watts data that we have over here. And if we look at October 3rd, if we scroll way down to that, you can see that on October 3rd, we should have uh, 1,100 uh, watt hours of production. On October 4th, we should be at 909. And so if we go back to the performance data, you can see that sure enough, we're at 1,100 and 909. Now, <clears throat> This data is per panel. And so to get the actual panel production, you can see that on October 3rd, we had two panels. So we should take the, the 1100 and multiply it by two, and that gets us to the 2200. Um, similarly down here on the 17th, where we, where we actually went up to six panels, we were expecting 11, 1200 per panel. So whenever we multiply that by six, we're back at the, the total estimated watt hours of production. <clears throat> now, to get down to the, to the actual information, um, these numbers that are in yellow here, these are the numbers that I am actually getting from the solar regulator as being the energy that is produced. Now we have a, a couple things going on here. 
it's really impossible to know how much solar is actually, it, it's impossible to independently determine that this number of watt hours of, of electric usage is actually being offset. This is just what the solar regulator is telling us, but we have to assume that it is accurate because we can't do anything else. Um, so on October 3rd, this data again is directly from the app. Um, if you go to the second tab over of the historic data, um, that's basically what you get. And for October 3rd, it says that we produced 1137 watt hours. <clears throat> and uh, similarly, as soon as we, you can see that we were down around 700, 500, whenever we had the two sets, whenever we went up to the six sets, we actually jumped up to 3000. So you can see the effect of that. And uh, similarly, as we go on down through here, Interestingly, if you look at the estimated total uh, watts of production based on that PV watts data, you can see that for the overwhelming majority of the days, they would expect that we would produce a lot more power than we have actually been producing. Um, I actually have calculated the ratio here, and you can see that on October 3rd, we produced about 51% of what they would have estimated that we would have produced based on the inverter efficiency uh, loss and everything else that they have to calculate. And similarly, you can look down through here and you can see that there are a few days where we overproduced, but in general, um, we have been underproducing on a day-by-day -day basis. But you can't really use a day-by-day -day basis because we could have an extremely sunny day where on average it's been cloudy, Therefore, we would expect that we would overproduce and vice versa. You could have times where uh, we've had extremely cloudy days where on average it has been more sunny than that. And for those days, you would expect that we would greatly underproduce. <clears throat> um, so if we have a, an average uh, kilowatt hour usage of uh, the 12.43 cents, you can see that uh, since October 3rd, that the solar regulator reports that we have produced 87.46 uh, kilowatt hours. And uh, you can see that based on that usage cost, that means that we have saved a whopping $10.87. Um, if we look at the the estimated production since we began, uh, the estimated production that the PV Watts website would predict would be 276 uh, kilowatt hours, whereas in reality we have produced the 87 kilowatt hours, which means that uh, my data is showing that the, the 2.1 kilowatt Legion Solar System is producing about 31% of what would be expected during the same time period at this location. Um, this is obviously less than ideal. Um, we would expect that um, based on that data and uh, based on this disclaimer that we have up here at the, the very, very top, that we would expect that um, most of the time, we should be in between 94% and 103.7%. And we are currently at 31%. So I don't know exactly what's going on there. Um, I'm uh, open to suggestions. But at this time, that is a performance data. Um, we've got about seven weeks of data. I will be producing updated videos that talk more about this. But that is where things are at right now. Uh, be sure to uh, comment and subscribe if you have not done so, so that uh, you are aware of future videos. And I look forward to hearing what your thoughts are on this. Thank you much.